This book is called Misty, The Capture. It's based on Marguerite Henry's book, Misty of Chincoteague. Two creative artists cooperated in putting this book together. Joan Nichols, herself an author of other children's books, used the words of Marguerite Henry and added a few of her own words to take a big chapter book and shrink it down to a picture book sized project. The illustrations were done by Stephen Moore from Kentucky. No one had ever captured the Phantom. She was the wildest member of the Pied Piper's band. She was also the smartest and the most beautiful. On Pony Penning Day, when the wild ponies of Assateague Island were rounded up for the swim across the league, the Phantom always managed to escape. But this year will be different, Paul Beebe vowed. How, Paul? asked his sister Maureen. How will it be any different from last year or the year before? Because this year I'm riding in the roundup, Paul answered, and I'm going to capture her. Paul and Maureen were on Assateague Island, hoping to catch a glimpse of the wild ponies. Look, Paul, Maureen whispered. There they are. Do you see the phantom, Paul? Maureen asked. It's hard to tell, Paul answered. They're all in a bunch. Suddenly, as the children watched, one pony broke free and galloped off. The Pied Piper tore after her. Paul's eyes widened in disbelief. That's her! In his excitement, he hardly breathed. It's the Phantom! Maureen hugged herself to keep from shouting. She's beautiful! The runaway Phantom was easy to recognize. Her coat was the color of copper. Silver streaked her mane and tail. Spread across her back was a strange white marking shaped like a map of the United States. Paul made a solemn promise to himself. This year would be different. This year, the phantom would be captured, and he would be the one to do it. Four months passed. April, May, June, July. One morning toward the end of July, Paul woke up early. For a few moments, he lay quiet, trying to remember why today was special. <laughs> it was pony punning day. Paul leaped out of bed and grabbed for his clothes. Hurriedly, he pulled on his shirt and pants, then thudded downstairs to the kitchen. Good morning, Paul, Grandma said. Sit down and eat a breakfast, fit for a roundup man. <laughs> Feeling proud at being called a roundup man, Paul tried to eat, but he, he was so excited the food just lumped in his throat. He glanced at the clock. At last it was time. I've got to go now, he called, and ran out the door. Watch Eyes, a good, dependable pony, was waiting outside. Remember, Paul, Grandpa said. Obey your leader, no matter what. Paul loped down the quiet streets of Chincoteague. Soon other roundup men joined him. In a few minutes, they all clattered across the small bridge that led to Piney Island. There they boarded the old scow that would carry them across the channel to Assateague. When they landed, they mounted their horses and turned to face their leader. While Maddox split into three bunches, while commanded, and head north, south, and east, he motioned to Paul. Paul, you and Kim Horsepepper, come with me. We'll all meet at Thomas Point. Yep. Paul touched his bare heels to watch eyes' sides. They were off. Over pine woodlands and sand dunes, through marshes and mud holes, they rode. Suddenly, Wiles' horse reared into the air and neighed. 
About twenty yards ahead, a band of wild ponies darted into the open, then vanished among the pines. In a flash, Paul and the others gave chase, galloping as hard as they could. Paul was thrilled. Now he really felt like a roundup man. Just then, Wiles shouted, pointing, Paul, there is a straggler. Go after it. Paul was stunned. He, he wanted to go on whooping and hollering after the band of wild ponies, not chase after some puny pony that couldn't even keep up with the herd. He wanted to catch the phantom. Wow, Maddox wants to be rid of me, Paul thought. Maybe there isn't any straggler. Then he remembered Grandpa's words. Obey your leader, no matter what. With a sigh, oh, he wheeled watch eyes into the pine thicket. His eyes swept the trees for the least sign of movement. He rode on, his body covered with sweat. At last, far away and deep among the pines, something moved. It could have been anything, a deer, a squirrel, no matter, he was after it. Suddenly Paul reined in. What was that in the bushes ahead? His heart beat wildly. There it was, a silver flash like mist and sun. And just beyond, a glimpse of a long tail, the color of copper and silver. Could it be the phantom? Paul whispered. It is, it is, it is. And the silver flash, it's a brand new baby. The blood pounded in his ears. No wonder the phantom couldn't keep up with the herd, he murmured. She has a baby. He, Paul Beebe, had done it. He had captured the phantom. But how was he going to get her and her misty little colt to Tom's Point to join up with the other ponies? Should he try driving them along the beach or through the woods? Just then... The Pied Piper bugled through his nose, high, quavering notes, followed by a deep, snorting rumble. It was almost as if he had commanded, You get down here to Tom's Point now! Spinning around, the Phantom hurried off in his direction, her baby trotting along behind her. Paul laughed. He didn't have to drive the Phantom and her colt to Tom's Point. They were leading him. And that's the end of this book, Misty the Capture, adapted from Marguerite Henry's longer book, Misty of Chincoteague. Assateague and Chincoteague are real places on the east coast of the United States. Assateague is part of a national shoreline in Maryland, and just across the border in Virginia is Chincoteague. You can visit both places, and you can see where the ponies swim every year. Excerpted and adapted by Joan Nichols, illustrated by Stephen Moore, this is the end of Misty the Capture, a picture book for young readers, adapted from Misty of Chincoteague, a chapter book by Marguerite Henry.